Hi guys, it's Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. Welcome to my channel. Today's video is not a card, believe it or not, but I am going to still be working with paper. This is this is a new die from Spellbinders. It's a new type of die. They haven't had this this collection before. It's by Kathy Holden, and these are deep etched dies that um, this one dies are designed to create nostalgic dimensional containers reminiscent of the greeting card bowls handmade by past generations of crafters. Now I think that this is a really interesting idea so I had to try it. I only got one set of the dies. There are different ones, different designs, and believe it or not they're all interchangeable. So that is kind of cool. The one that I'm going to be using is for the hexagon base and side hex god base and side bowl so it basically is going to look kind of like this now when i saw the picture the first thing i noticed was the paper first off looks like it could have been cross stitched so that looks kind of cool which means i think you could do this with fabric or even with cross stitch material um but um the one i'm doing is with paper and i watched a video that described how this was basically used and i don't recall my mom ever doing that or seeing anything that my grandmother may have made, but it still has kind of that that kind of vintagey feel that takes me back to when I was a kid. Now I did do an unboxing of all of this stuff earlier this month and showed you guys these um, flea market find papers. And what I mentioned during that is that they looked like old greeting cards well that is exactly what they are designed to look like because this is what you do with all of this stuff is you basically are going to be cutting out the pieces that are going to be creating your bowl i've already done three of them here and I, this is going to be just lovely i'm excited and you can stitch it together however which way you want to you could do just a standard straight stitch you could do a, a blanket stitch i'm actually using crochet which is a simple simple crochet so um i'm going to show you how i'm doing that and again i watched another video on this so i would have a better understanding of how these things work so what we do to create the card because this is not just the paper if you feel look at the paper this is some thin paper this is not and it's not just two layers what we're using is we're using um, some thin cardboard now for these I basically had just run out of tea <laughs> out of a, a box of tea I think it was like Lipton iced tea because I like drinking my iced tea I'm southern um, so I used the pieces of that box and glued the paper down onto it and cut these pieces out what I also realized is you can also use this this is one of the boards from a 12 by 12 paper pack it is thin cardstock or rather thin cardboard so this is going to work perfect and what I'm using to adhere everything together is just some standard matte finish Mod Podge now if you want it to have a kind of water resistant feel to it you may want to use the gloss but I'm just using what I've got and I have a brush around here so here we go so I've got a my Mod Podge brush I never use this stuff so this is another opportunity for me to use things that I never use and I'm just going to add a thin layer of the adhesive down and I have this other piece of paper under here to make the paint basically look make my desk look prettier let me move that out of the way because I need my glass top so that I don't get make a complete mess okay so I'm just gonna add this adhesive down I'm gonna try to get to the edges so I don't waste any of it because I still have let's see I've done three so for a hexagon I need two more of these and then I need the bottom so I need do have some space that I need to be able to do and when you put this down you're not going to be using the entire piece of paper that you're putting down because of the your uh, because of the die cut okay and this does not take very long to dry which is also nice but that also means you need to work work a little bit quickly so I'm going to start off with 
this design. So I'm going to be using one. I'm going to use one piece of this. And I'm going to put it over near the edge. One reason for putting it near the edge is so you have an idea of where the front to the back is going to be. Okay, so I've just got that Mod Podge down. And I'm going to just let the rest of that dry. I may put down like a scrap of paper or something on there. I'm also going to add the second piece over here. So I'm going to go ahead and add some down here. And since you're going to be cutting a couple of shapes out, you don't necessarily have to go all the way to the edge. But I like doing that and gluing it all down just on the safe side because it kind of be a pain if I went through all the trouble of putting this stuff together and then I didn't have quite enough. Of the paper, you know? Okay, so I could put this piece of scrap there, but I'm not going to because that's going to be the back for this. Same thing for this one. It's going to be the back for that. So, okay, I do want to go ahead and get this knocked out. So give me just a second to clean up a little bit and trim my paper down, and I will be right back. So I'm cleaning off some of my dust because I don't want any of this to be messed up when I turn it over. I want to make sure that there's not any glue on there. Now, this is not completely dry, but it is stuck on there, and the card, the paper, is dry. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down. And this is the piece that I'm going to put over here. Now, it doesn't really matter which direction it goes, because this is actually going to be part of the bottom. I haven't decided if it's going to be on the underside or on the inside, but we're basically going to have a hexagon shape. We're going to just have this piece cut out of this. And I believe that is also going to be the inside on one of my hexagons, so it's not really going to matter there either. The part that's going to matter most is going to be on the outside, because that's the one that I want to look nice and pretty. The inside of the bowl will still be pretty, but it's not as, it's not as vital. Okay, so I'll go ahead and put this piece down, lined up right with the edge. and press it on into that adhesive. Then I'll do the same thing over here for my extra piece. And I think I used a little bit too much glue that time, but you know what, that's okay. Let's see if I can put it back in the bottle. As we never want to waste anything, right? Okay. Now I'm going to put this one down. Now I know it looks like it should go that way, but you know what? I want to make sure I can see my green, right? So I'm going to lay it down this way. And it is totally fine that there is part of it that's going to be kind of not showing. It just means I'm not going to use that, that piece there when I do my die cutting. Okay. And to make sure that that's all correct, I'm going to go ahead and trim off this bit here. And I might as well trim this in half as well, because that's going to make it easier to go through my die cutting machine. Okay, so now I have to decide what part of the scene do I want to show on that piece of my basket. And I think I really like the house. <laughs> okay, so I've got a bird. I've got some um, some holly. I've got one house there. And I think I want this house as well. And I think I'm going to put it here. So... Here's another thing with these dies. These dies, normally you would think I can't cut through that thick of cardstock with my <laughs> with my dies because a lot of times you can't. But this one has got an extra thick blade to be able to cut through this. Um, from what I saw on that video, you're able to cut through like six sheets of 
the paper if you want to do all of it separate and glue them together after the fact or you can um, do like what I'm doing and cut through I can probably cut through two at a time but I'm not going to do that because I want to make sure this is right um, also look at that green on the back so this is going to be the inside of my um, of my basket okay and since it's a hexagon, you know, one is not going to really completely match, but you know, I think it's still going to look really cool. So I've got it down using my magic mat because I always use my magic mat when I'm doing any of my die cutting. Saves my plates. The plates do still warp a little bit depending on how much pressure and how thick of stuff you put through there, but overall, this works fantastic. And you can feel when you are turning this, it is a little stiff trying to go through because it is thick cardstock and it is that deep cut blade. So it's not quite like a, like a steel rule, but it does cut wonderfully. Okay. And this one, I think it looks like it looks like I should have waited a little bit longer for the glue to dry because the paper is trying to rip off a little bit. That is totally fine though. That part is going to be covered up by my stitching. Okay. So that looks great. And then these guys just pop right on out. So I'm going to pop out all of my little circles here. And that's going to be where all of my stitching is going to be. So now comes the fun part. I've got all of my bits, all of my pieces are already cut out. So now I'm going to create that really pretty crocheted stitching around the edges. And it's really not that difficult to do. It is not rocket surgery. Now I am going to start at the bottom because I want to make sure that the where I tie everything together really isn't as noticeable. And so I'm going to put my crochet hook in. Um, this is the smallest one that I could find in my stash because I don't really know where the rest of them are. This is probably a little bit bigger than what I need because it is sometimes a little bit difficult to get my hook to go through the hole. So if you have a smaller one, I believe they suggested size zero, that would be the best option for you. I'm also using crochet thread instead of yarn. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that crochet yarn is probably going to be a little bit too bulky for my taste anyway around the edges. You could absolutely use that if you wanted to. I even tried Baker's twine and it would work, but the color that I had, it was the black and white stripe, just did not go <laughs> with what I wanted to do here. So it said, I went ahead and bought some crochet thread to do this. So what I'm going to do is holding the tail to the back of my card over here and I've got my hook through I'm going to just if I can make my hands do this I don't crochet much guys sorry <laughs> okay let me get this straight I need to put my yarn right there I need to put my hook through one of the middle holes and then I always twist my hand around uh, the thread around my finger. And this is the part that I always forget how to explain it. But I do that so I can try to hold it somewhat taut. And then we're just going to loop it around and pull the thread through. So now we have a loop. Okay. And we're just going to do a single crochet. Okay. So all we do is we tuck it under, pull it through, and it's all attached. Okay. We're going to actually, in each of the holes, we're going to do a total of three. So on the first one that you do, we're going to do two to start. So I'm here. I'll put this back through the hole, grab another piece of the yarn or thread. So now I've got two, two loops on my, on my hook, and I'll twist it around and pull one through again. So now I've got basically two little loops in that hole. Next, I'm going to go on to the next one. Now, one thing you may want to try to make sure that you do is at some point, you're going to want to um, take care of this extra thread. So you may want to thread it through there or just stitch it through at the end. I'm going to just do the stitching at the end, I believe. So I'm just going to go again. We've got the two there. We put it through once, hook it around, pull it through. 
and then hook it around. I think it's called yarn over. I don't know. I learned how to crochet from my mom and from just experimentation when I was a kid. So I never learned all of the fancy terms for what everything is called. I just did it. So we're doing three stitches of a single crochet into each of the holes. So this one has two. We're going to add another one on at the end. Then this one has three. So then we go back to the next one. Same thing. Pull it through, yarn over, I think, and pull it through both of those little loops. One more time, put the crochet through, put the crochet hook through the hole, pull the thread through, and then we pull that thread through those two holes. So that one's got two. And we go one more time. Okay, so now we've got a couple of them done. Um, I'm actually going to redo this last one here. So put the hook through the hole, pull it through, and then we grab the yarn again and pull it through both, who, uh, both loops. Come through, pull it through once. We've, now we have two loops on our crochet hook, and then we pull it back through the two. Now I'm holding my crochet hook this way because it makes it easier for me. This is something I discovered uh, about halfway through I think the first one is that if I hold it like this it's easier for me to work with. Usually when I have crocheted in the past it's all crochet and the other way me doing it like this works fine but it, because this is so stiff, my hands are not able to work around it. So you find what works best for you, okay? Make sure that you're comfortable and when you're putting everything together. Okay, so I went ahead and pulled one through. We've got two loops. I'll pull another loop through the two. Okay, so now we've got three here and three here. Next, we're going to be doing the corners. Now for the corner, these bottom corners, I'm doing six into that one hole. That was the recommendation from the video that I watched before. And if I can find that video again, I will link that down below as well. That way you've got another reference as to how to do this. So on these, because they're tight corners, we need more stitches, okay? These up here, I'm gonna do five instead of six because they don't need quite as many. And all the rest are gonna get three. This is also something that is going to be easy to do just sitting in front. Once you get the hang of it, it'll be easy to do once um, in front of the TV, just watching some TV. And actually, that's how I finished up two of those three panels that I've already done. So I've got two in there. Okay, we'll do a third. And on the corners, it does start feeling a little bit tight. So I'm trying to make sure I get the first three as much as I can on the first edge before I start turning. That's just so that I can hopefully get everything to fit on there the way they need, they need to and not have any of my loops too loose. Don't really like loose stitches, right? So that's four. And five. And six. Okay, um, now I'm going to tell you that although this to me looks pretty good and these, I love the way that they turned out, I have not crocheted in probably at least two years. And that was the first time at that point that I had in probably at least 10. So I am not an expert at crochet. I do not do it very often. But that just means that if I can do this, you can too. Okay, so we've got single crochet one, single crochet two, single crochet three. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and basically go around the rest of this panel and then I'll show you how to take care of this part at the end. So I've gone all the way around. This last bit has got three stitches in it. Like I was saying, each one needs to have three. The two corners here need six and the two at the top 
these pieces have five. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more stitch in there and that's going to kind of tie everything together so we don't have this big gap. So I'm going to go ahead and put and one more stitch here. And again, it is just a single crochet. Okay, then I'm going to do a slip knot. Now to do a slip knot, and that's going to tie this off, all you do is you pull it through, tighten it up, and then we're going to trim this, we're going to basically cut this, um, this thread off. Now we want to make sure that it's long enough because we're going to be using that in another bit. Um, like you can see on these, I have kind of a long tail on each of those. So I want to do the same thing here. And okay, I'm going to cut it right about here. Okay, so the next part is where we're going to need to basically tie these off so that they're going to be kind of sewn into what we've got here. Now for this part, I'm going to be using a, I guess it's a darning needle. It's not a really big needle, but it is one that you'd be using for like crochet or knitting or anything like that. But I have a really hard time getting the thread to go through. So I'm going to use a flosser to put my to put my um, crochet thread through the needle. So that's how I'm going to be doing that. And it works great. Now you could just use this on its own, but I found that it is a bit hard to uh, maneuver all of my thread through behind my other, uh, my crochet thread when I do that. So what I'm going to do with this now is I'm just going to, the last of the stitches came from this side. So it's going this direction. So I am going to basically just stitch under the stitches that I've already done and out the side and just pull that through. And now that looks very, very polished. I'm going to do the same thing with this piece. Now this is a much smaller piece um, and, I didn't, and that was kind of on purpose because I didn't want to waste a lot of the thread. But I'm going to thread it through the same way. And I'm going to do the same thing and stitch it through this side. Now I probably should have done a little bit longer of thread, but I'm going to stitch that right through the edge there, pull that through. And anything that is left over, I'm just going to trim off of this end because it's not needed. Just don't cut any of your stitches or any of the, yeah, don't cut any of your crochet. So now I've got this this fourth panel done. I'm going to go ahead and get these last ones done because it's the exact same thing. Um, on the bottom, because of the edge, the way that that edge is, these corners all had five. So I'm going to put, I think I'm going to put five stitches in each of those four corners and then we're going to start stitching everything together. So just like we did on the last one, I'm down to the end here. So I'm going to do add my third stitch to the hole where I started everything off. Then I'm going to do a, a slip stitch to tie it off and cut off the excess. Okay. Then I'm going to do that little bit of stitching to tie off both of the pieces. One is for this little end that I have left over from the beginning. And I'm using my flosser to help me thread my needle. And for that one, I'm just going to take it back the way we started and stitch that right on through. And then I'll just cut off that excess there. But for this piece, I need it to go this direction, the same direction that we were crocheting. So we came around this way. I need it to come this way. So let's go ahead and I thread that through my needle. And then on the back, I'm going to stitch it under all of those stitches that we, all the little stitches where we put it through those holes. 
So we're going right through all of those little bits. You can see that that looks a lot nicer there. And I'll take it back through this last bit here as well. Okay, and then this piece is done. So now I've got my, my five sides done and all I need to do now is work on the bottom. And I think I'm going to have this as being the actual bottom of the bowl and this is gonna be up, I think. Let me line everything up and see how it looks. So we've got our, our five pieces here. These are the fronts, so I need to turn it over so I can see the inside. Okay. And then I would have either this, either this way or this way. I think that actually looks better for the insides, but let's see what it looks like for the outside. If I turn all of these back over, this will be the outside of the ball. I think that'll look fine. So I'm going to have this as the inside, and that means I'm going to have to add, act as though that's the back, and I'll need to do all my crochet from this side. So I'll go ahead and start this one off. Just like before, put my needle through, or rather put my crochet hook through. And pull a loop through. Do a single crochet. And then we'll do three stitches in each of the holes. So there, actually, oh, start over. Okay, so we've got our single loop, do a single crochet, put our needle through, our hook through, pull a second loop through, and then do a single crochet through both of those. And then since we've got our two there, we're gonna go on to the next and put in three. Three stitches or three crochets. I don't know. I don't know how to talk about crochet. Okay, so when we get to the corner, we're gonna do five, five crochets in each of the corners here, but all the rest we're gonna do three. Okay, so all of my stitching, all of my crochet has been done for all of my little panels. Now, when you look at the edge of the panel, if you've ever looked at crochet, you notice that it's kind of got this little V shape for each of the stitches. And that's going to be our friend right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the part that's going on the outside. So this is on the outside bottom. This is going to be on the inside bottom. And here's one of my panels. I'm, and this is the outside. These are the two outside pieces. I'm going to line those up. And I'm going to stitch these together using that that piece of the stitch that is closest on the inside, okay? And this is actually the tail from my bigger piece. I did leave a nice long tail because I'm gonna to try to go all the way around without needing to use any additional thread here. Okay, so I'm gonna just start here and I think I'm gonna go, because this is on the underside right now. Okay, I'm just gonna go into the end here and stitch through there. So we've got, this is going to be tying the pieces together. So just pulling that through. So I've got the first one on there, see? Now I'm going to come down to the next stitch and do the same thing. Basically going to try to go through um, pretty much each individual stitch there. So it's gonna have a nice cohesive um, It's going to connect well. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Ah, I am not good with these words. Okay, so you see, I'm just continuing on. And it is attaching those two pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and go all the way down this, this piece here. Just coming to the next stitch. Okay. 
and stitching through. And then to the next. And so on and so forth. So I made it all the way down to the end of the first one. So now I'm going to grab my next panel. So this is going to go here. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to just continue on with this one. And I don't want to attach it to this piece. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and grab my next stitch. And the end stitch here. I'll say that one looks good. And now I'm going to attach this piece onto our bottom. Okay. And doing the exact same thing as before, just going in one stitch on one side through the stitch on the other, and it is the top piece of, the, of each of those little V's. Okay, so I got to this point and this is what I have left for to go all the way around. So I'm I've got another piece of yarn or thread here for that. I also realized that I only had two more pieces instead of three, so I went ahead and did another one, which is good because now I can put this one over here and everything will be pretty much matchy matchy. So I'm going to go ahead and start stitching this one on just like the others using my new thread and I will need to tie it off. So I'm basically just going to start it off right down here where I stopped the last one and come through and then I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail from my new piece of thread or for, for of crochet thread. So you can see that here. And I'm going to just stitch that piece right into what I'm doing. Okay. So I think for the first one, I'm going to skip it. Just go into the next little slot there. And the next one, I'm going to make sure that I have this, my tail inside. So I'm just going to stitch that right in. So you're not going to see it and it's not really going to be, it's not going to be hanging off or anything like that. And I feel that what I'm probably going to do when I finish all of this up is do the same thing with all of the excess that may still be hanging there. It's all going to get stitched in. You're not going to see it and um, it's going to look good. The most important part though is making sure that you have your paper facing the right direction. which I do have all of my pretty sides on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this one up and get the other two pieces attached to the base. Okay, so now I've got all of my panels attached to the base. Now what you should have once you get there is you'll have a tail from each of your side panels for each of those, right? So I'm just going to kind of separate each of those out so we can see them all. Okay, so now I'm going to use, on one of my panels, I didn't realize that I need the longer tail, so I didn't cut it quite long enough to be able to stitch up the side well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use what's left from that second piece that I used to go around the base. I'm going to use that to stitch my um, the rest of this up. Okay, and I am going to try to do a little bit tight down at the bottom here because I don't want there to be a gap. So I'm probably going to add a few extra stitches right down here just to make sure that it's nice and tight.
So I don't really want a gap there. And I'm just going to go ahead and stitch all up the side just like I did all around the base. So now we've got the rest of this tail and what I need to do is I need to basically weave it back into what we just stitched, right? And I don't want it to come loose so I'm just going to actually just weave it in and out a little bit. And this is a fairly long tail. I'll go ahead and bring that on down. And I think I'm going to come back up this side. Actually, yeah, back up. So I'm going to go down further, I think, all the way down to the bottom. And I'm sure that I'll still have some thread left, so I will be working my way back up with this. I'm going to do the same thing with each of these panels. Okay, so for that one now I can go ahead and trim off that little bit of excess and we've got our first side done and I think that turned out pretty nice. Actually it looks better than I thought it was going to. I do like this way that the stitches are looking. So I'm going to go ahead and get busy working on the rest of this. So it looks like this is going to be the last of the sewing. I've got just a few more stitches to go and then this cute little bowl is going to be done. Okay. So all I need to do now is just do a little bit of weaving back or stitching back in to kind of tie it off. And I decided that weaving it down into these didn't work quite as well, so I'm just doing a little bit of stitching behind that center part. Just a few stitches down and maybe back up, and that should tie it off enough so that it won't come loose. And that, of course, is the goal. Okay, I'm going to say that that is good and just cut off this last little bit. And now this <laughs> little ball is done. I think this turned out super cute. I've never made anything like this before, but I think this is going to be kind of cute for a, a Christmas, you know, kind of some, some, a Christmas centerpiece, maybe for my coffee table to hold something. I think that's super cute. Anyway, you guys have a wonderful day. Be sure to check out this playlist to see some other uh, projects that I've made using Spellbinders products. And remember, if I can make it, come on guys, you know you can. If I can make it, you can too. Y'all have a great day and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.